Ethernet cables are commonly known as network cables. Now, every Ethernet cable have four pairs, which is eight wires. And these wires are divided in pairs within the Ethernet cable. Now, an Ethernet cable is connected to RJ45 connectors at both ends. And these wires are connected to this connector in a particular order depending on if it is a crossover cable or a straight through cable. Now we're going to be talking about both types of these cables within this training along with the various types of Ethernet cables from category 5E right up to category 8. Now here we have a straight through cable which have 8 wires. Now we have from 1 to 8 here and we have orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown this particular configuration is called t-568b this is a straight through configuration and on the other side we have the same t-568b configuration having the same type on both ends this is how we make a straight through cable we have orange white orange green white blue blue white green and brown white brown just like over here this is a straight through cable uh, a straight through cable is used to connect unlike devices like from a switch to a computer these are unlike devices so they have different types of network cards within them NIC stands for network interface card and the switch has an MDI dash X type network interface card now the computer has an MDI interface card there's nothing after that just MDI medium density interface that's what MDI stands for and this also the same thing medium density interface and the X stands for cross connect now if you take a close look at the MDI dash X type interface card you'll see that pin 1 and 2 is the transmit from MDI-X and pin 1 and 2 over here is the receive so the orange and white and orange is connected directly to the orange and white orange pin 1 and 2 over here carrying information from this connection right over to here which is the receive now this network card transmit back from 3 and 6 so 3 and 6 here the white and green and the solid green will be connected to 3 and 6 over here as well uh, white and green solid green 3 and 6 so it's carrying information from the transmit here to the receive in the beginning of networking the speeds were 10 megabits and later 100 megabits per second was the data speeds of these cables so for those particular data speeds you only require two pairs the transmit and the receive that which is um, just two pairs of wires the other wires are not used just two pairs of wires are used to transmit 10 megabits per second and 100 megabits per second of data okay and we're here we're using a T568B which is a straight through cable to connect unlike devices here we're going to be using a crossover cable. We're using eight wires still, just like before. The crossover cable is going from a T568B, which we talked about before, to a T568A connection. Now, the B connection is connected in the same way like we just talked about. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. You'll see here that the orange and white and the orange goes to three and six and the green and white and the green is connected to one and two unlike before when you have the same identical connections on both sides so though that's the only difference between the two particular connections the switch between orange and white orange and green and white green those are the only changes that are made between the T568B and T568A. Now the reason for this is because here you have light devices, like two switches connected together. Um, 
or you can have two computers connected together though those would also be like devices anything that's the same is a like device so like devices would have the same network card if it was a computer it would have a two MDI cards instead of two MDI-X cards here we have two MDI-X cards here so in order to connect these two devices we use a T568B on one end and T568A on the other end we're transmitting from one and two going over to the receive which is three and six you, rem you remember with the um, with the MDI card one and two was the receive but here one and two is transmit just like this one so we can't go from transmit to transmit we have to go from transmit to receive so we connect uh, one and two two three and six this is what we call a crossover cable and also to transmit back from here we transmit back from one and two to three and six here as well so this is what a crossover cable is and this is the RJ45 connector if you if I didn't mention that before this is the RJ45 connector I drawn in here this is exactly how this cable here will be connected to this RJ45 connector at one end it would be T568B on the other end it would be connected in a T568A configuration whereas the straight through cable that we talked about before where we'll have a T568B connection going to this RJ45 cable at one end and a T568B on the other end for a straight through cable now crossover cables were only really needed until around 1983 when manufacturers came out with uh, network interface cards that will actually um, be able to sense when the signal is coming in on the wrong lead let's say for instance you have two switches which is like devices but you but you're using a straight through cable now that wouldn't work obviously normally with cars prior to 1983 however with cars 1983 and after the card has an internal circuitry that will detect when the signal is coming in on the wrong leads like for instance if you connect transmit to transmit it will see that and it will actually put the signal on the correct ports into the card so because of this we really didn't need uh, crossover cables anymore uh, straight through cables become the standard so most cables that we use from that point onward will be um, T568B type cables like this one T568B cables at both ends uh, didn't matter if it was connecting like devices or unlike devices because after 1983 the network interface cars were capable of sensing the signal that's coming in and actually put that signal on the right port it didn't matter if it was coming in on the receive pair or the transmit pair the the network interface card would actually take care of that so t568b cars became the standard from this point on you, you would still have crossover cables out there uh, but crossover cables would just be used for very special circumstances the majority of Ethernet cables use the T568B configuration and as we said before 10 gigabit and 100 gigabit cards only use two pairs one and two and three and six to transmit and receive however for the one gigabit card this is where we started using all eight wires of that Ethernet cable and not only did we use all eight wires we use all eight wires in a bi-directional way which mean that let's say the switch transmit on line one once the switch transmits on line one the PC now would transmit back on line one as well so they both transmit back and forth on line one line two 
uh, they both transmit back and forth on line two and line three. So all of the wires from one right up to eight are used in a bi-directional way. This is how you get high speeds of one gigabits per second or higher um, between uh, switches and PCs or switches and switches, switches and routers. Uh, this is how you actually um, get that high speed um, of one gigabit per second or higher. Now this is a local area network. This local area network is connected with Ethernet cables and each one of these Ethernet cables connecting from modem to router or router to switch or from the switch to all the PCs here. Any one of these cables connecting any two devices can only be 100 meters maximum length. So the maximum length of any Ethernet cable within a local area network is 100 meters. Now here we have the different categories of twisted pair cable. Category 5E have a maximum frequency of 100 megahertz. The data rate is 1000 megabits per second and it goes as high as 2.5 gigabits per second. It uses UTP or STP cable and the maximum distance this cable can go is 100 meters. Now I also want to mention here that any cable that I mentioned here is also backward compatible with the lower speeds like 10 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second. They're all backward compatible. Now I also want to mention that um, if anyone here aren't quite sure how UTP or STP cables work, I have a video link in the description below um, that you can click on after watching this video to get a full understanding of exactly how these cables work. Now next we have category 6 type cable. Um, the frequency is 250 megahertz for category 6 and the speed is 5 gigabits per second and 10 gigabits per second. However, at 10 gigabits per second you can only get a distance of 55 meters. This cable also use UTP cable or STP type cable. Now for category 6A, which runs at a frequency of 500 megahertz, and the speeds are 5 gigabits per second and 10 gigabits per second, just like category 6. But the difference here is, at 10 gigabits per second, this cable can actually go a distance of 100 meters. Unlike category 6 which only goes 55 meters at 10 gigabits per second. Now category 6A also use UTP or STP type cable. Now for category 7 which runs at a frequency of 600 megahertz, the speed is 10 gigabits per second at 100 meters. However this cable only use STP type cable which is shielded twisted pair. Okay, um, if I didn't mention before, I'd like to mention it now, UTP stands for unshielded twisted pair and STP stands for shielded twisted pair. So category 7 only use shielded twisted pair cable only. Um, now category 8 runs at a frequency of 2000 megahertz. Um, the speed is 25 gigabits per second and 40 gigabits per second. The maximum distance for category 8 is 30 meters and STP cable only which is shielded twisted pair cable only is used. We cannot use unshielded twisted pair with category 8 or category 7. Now for all of these cables we use an RJ45 type connection. Category 8 cables have two choices. It could use the traditional type RJ45 um, connection or it could use the new Category 8 connection type. If this training has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one, don't forget to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be notified as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. 
Thank you for watching.